Como é que é, pessoal? Bem-vindos novamente ao Underground Voice ao vivo. Hoje tenho o prazer de receber os Puma Void. Guys, thank you so much for being here. It's really awesome to meet you and to receive you there at Underground Voice. So, uh, the latest album, Lidless, was released uh, last year in August, and it's your best release so far. Uh, the most solid, uh, dynamic, with all, all these mindfuck riffs. Uh, <laughs> Uh, great production, it's really, really a great album. Uh, so, do you agree? Uh, how do you look at this album? Uh, for us, it, it really feels like now we are, you know, now we are getting started, like, properly. Uh, well, obviously, because they have been, like, uh, self-produced releases previously. And also, I think we've, like, found the final things in our sound that maybe have been missing so yeah we are super happy and uh, although the album might be for some people pretty intense we find that it, it's got some variety in it as well like we explored some new things so we are happy with that uh, By the way, do you hear any noise in the background? Because we are staying in a relative, uh, a family relative, and there's some noise. Yeah, no problem. I can hear you perfectly. Yeah, cool. No problem. Uh, well, the album is being very well received by the fans, uh, but some of them are saying that's uh, that's not easy to digest because and understand because it's really complex. Um, do you agree with that? Do you do you feel that it's not an easy album to understand on the first listen? Yeah, I think so too. Um, and actually, I enjoy myself a lot when you have to listen it again and again, and you still find new things. Yeah, so I understand that point of view very well. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. I also I understand if it feels like that because when we are making new music, a lot of the times we are we want to explore something new like i wonder how this would sound or i wonder how this would sound and then when you finally have made the composition and you're like oh man do i really have to learn this now <laughs> <laughs> and so the first uh first times trying to like play the song or i mean yeah and even playing the song together for the first time with the band It's always like, it feels like an achievement, kind of. But of course, then little by little, you know, it just becomes familiar. And then maybe it's, you know, it's some kind of, you know, you become blind for your own things. So now I don't, when I hear the songs, of course, I know them. So it doesn't feel complicated, but. Yeah, it doesn't feel complicated at all anymore, you know. But of course, in the in the beginning, it's always yeah. There's that moment when I think that's how it feels to the new listener as well. <laughs> mm. It's a great album. And the album was released by uh, by Novel Demon, and it's the first time that you, the band is working with a label. Uh, so how important is this for you guys? And how's being worked with with this label? But, well, very important. I feel like we have gotten a lot more fans because because of Noble Demon and they are very nice guys to work with. So I think also the positive atmosphere uh, when working with them yeah. has affected very positively in our in our work, I think. Yeah, I think it's a good thing. I mean, uh, of course, bands can release them by themselves these days very easily. But with the label, it feels more like it's, it's uh, you know, Uh, you are more, you follow through all the plans because you're making the plans together and the label has contacts and some experience of things that maybe the band doesn't. And yeah, with, with Noble Demon, uh, it's been very, very nice. Um, and they'd be super chill, like very nice to just, you know, send a messenger, message of, I don't know, we're setting memes sometimes. So that's the level of communication with them. But very professional, you know, when it comes to putting out albums and promoting them. So yeah, we're happy. 
And Lidless were on top 10 on the official uh, album chart in physical sales. In the yeah. Year, right? So we all know that's really difficult for a metal band comparing with uh, all the all the other genres. So it's, it's an incredible achievement for you. Um, how do you feel about that? I feel awesome, <laughs> really. <laughs> yeah, it feels super good. I remember, I think I was just Googling like uh, album releases on the week, whatever was the week when the album was put out. I was like, I'm oh, really blah, blah, blah. And then I started going down the list. I'm like, wow, we were actually in there. <laughs> like, is this true? But yeah, but I guess then again, in Finland, maybe it's a little easier than in some other countries. I don't know. <laughs> in Portugal, it's just possible with Moonspell. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, yeah, if you have those, like national <laughs> heroes, <laughs> like some countries have, yeah. It's obviously a huge seal of quality for the album and also for the band, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean... Uh, yeah, exactly, it's great to say that we have been there, so... Yeah, it also feels like, uh, it feels like, uh, you know, that we're not deaf that maybe, maybe it sounds pretty good to the other people as well. Also like sound wise and everything. Although we did a lot of the recording by ourselves, mm. but of course the mixing was done. Um, our friend Tuomas Uriaskari, who's actually, we used to play in the same band for a while and he's been recording a lot of our previous work. So we trust his ears. Mm. And the band was formed in 2013, uh, released the first album in 2014, and the AAP uh, one year later. So why did we have to wait almost five years to have a new album? Uh, well, I think it's pretty simple. If you think about that, the first album came one year after forming the band. I mean, sometimes when bands are putting, uh, people start bands, they, they, it takes five years to put the first album out. So we kind of, we had the first album songs from a previous project. So we just put it out. I think it was her, uh, she was in a conservatory and it was like a school work basically. So we just put the album out to basically just to have a clear birth for the band. Okay, now Humavoid exists, but um, we already, then we knew that we are going to go completely to a different direction with the sound because the old songs were written before the band. But then uh, we have been doing the music videos and stuff like that. I think the album was recorded in by the end of 2019, but then we were looking for a label because we didn't want to put it out ourselves. So that took a while and uh, all that stuff. Also, maybe uh, we're not the fastest writers <laughs> either. <laughs> uh, anyway, the artwork of this album is, is really awesome. It's, it's really a beautiful work. Uh, so can you tell us um, a little bit about the idea and the concept behind, behind this cover? Yeah. Um, now I have, to, I have to recall <laughs> a little bit. Um, Basically, it's like two sides of a face, and the other other face is looks like it's a normal face, but it's kind of dead on the inside. That's the meaning, and then uh, kind of the other side explodes, and it looks like dead, but it's like exploding in colors, and basically represents about you know letting go of the restrictions that you might have kind of like death for those restrictions will end up in a much more uh, well creative creative and free life <laughs> so and with little less we it means that you know keep your eyes peeled keep them open so you can take that in a lot of different ways also in the way of you know being able to uh, 
uh, absorb new information and inspiration, which then will kind of be the what the result of the cover is. Um, do you... I don't know if it makes any sense, but it's like. <laughs> Well, it's, it, I really love this artwork, yeah. It's one of the best I, I, I see in the last years, probably. Um, do you believe that this album can take you uh, to another level, considering that uh, not only it, it confirms the value that you were already at as a band in the other release, but also prove even better than, than these ones? Well, I think so. Yeah. 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 And now that we have our... Uh, drummer and bassist, you know, they have changed over the time. So now with this album, I think we are kind of feeling that we are ourselves and uh, we have found our own voice, like Nico said before. And yeah, I think, yeah, that's already something, you know, that could be taken as uh, being on another level already, like compared to the past, and uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of the a lot of things during making the album were felt like kind of magical, good luck, you know, strange stuff. Because like, for example, the collaboration with Ira Rantala, who played the piano solo on Aluminum Rain, uh, we didn't know him beforehand, but I just had an idea that it would be super cool to have a piano solo instead of a guitar solo. And then uh, I was like, why stop there? What if we, because bands have, you know, different musicians are featuring on different songs and all that. So we're like, what if we had someone else make the piano solo? And then uh, in, Actually, Iro is one of her favorite yeah, pianists. Yeah, it was so awesome that he came. Yeah, she was like, "No way, that's that's crazy." Uh, yeah, and like, I was saying to Nico that uh, I have no guts to ask him. So if Nico will ask him, then <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I um, I was afraid that he says no, but he was very excited from the beginning. Actually. Yeah, 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 it was super cool. And it took like eight minutes for him. We went, <laughs> we booked the studio with a proper grand piano, and he took uh, a few takes. And by the way, he was very like expressing himself, self like completely with his whole body. He was playing, and you could hear like not on the album, but the some takes in the microphone. You can hear that he's like. Ugh! grunting or something <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like this <laughs> so it's awesome yeah well yeah he said that that's the heaviest song that he's been playing on so i guess he really wanted to uh sound like that as well <laughs> he did a great, a great work uh, and yeah. like this is of course a big step for for the band uh, so how frustrating is not being able to play live for the fans yeah, it's it's terrible actually. <laughs> we we had a one gig right after releasing the album, and yeah. Yeah, we had one oh, album God. release show, and now there's no shows. So, and then it feels weird if you started to you know rehearse for a uh, one show in the near future because then if that gets cancelled, you've been kind of preparing all that stuff and then for nothing. So it's kind of uh, annoying situation, but well, you can always write new stuff. So that's what we've been doing. And, and finally, thank you so much for being here once again. It was a huge honor to receive you there. So any last words for the Portuguese fans and underground voice viewers? Well, we just got a vinyl Oh yeah. yeah, advertisement. We got a double vinyl out and it sounds amazing and it looks super cool because now you can see the artwork like a very big one. Uh, wait a <laughs> minute, she actually has it, if you have a moment. <laughs> yeah, sure. Ta-da! Yeah. <laughs> so let's take out one of these. Yeah. 
one of these bad boys. So yeah, it's a color vinyl like this. It's super cool inside also. So yeah. Oh yeah, and it's got two, three bonus tracks, two live tracks. So you can create your own live show simulator at home. <laughs> and then uh, one of the singles that we put out just before the record, uh, Monkey Chap, that has not previously been released on a physical uh, recording. But yeah, very much thank you for, for asking us and yeah. Yeah, and I, I wanna say that all the fans that just take care, stay healthy, and we'll see you at the gigs when it's possible. Yeah. So. Well, thank Rock you. Rock stay metal. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys, and see you soon. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Observation of the highest grade I'm falling all behind what's deep on